Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to video 167. What is the most killing blunder that we shouldn't commit in research thesis? In today's video, I am going to discuss both the do's and the do nots in uh, thesis or dissertation. First, I just would like to highlight uh, the do's. That is what we need to do. Uh, first of all, in uh, introduction chapter, we need to give background of the study. After background of the study, we give specification of research problem that is also called statement of the problem. Uh, we may also need justification of the problem. And after that, we will give objectives and our research questions. And that may be followed by hypothesis that we may go to test in this study. We may also give limitation of the study, if any. And uh, finally, we will give organization of the study. That is in how many chapters the thesis is organized. Uh, then we give critical literature review. Uh, we have in this section our chapter introduction and then review of relevant studies. And finally, we give a conclusion or a synthesis in which we identify the research gap and then we justify that this research was needed. After that, we give research methods. And in this section or chapter, we discuss data and sources of data collection, sample and sampling procedure that is used for data collection. If this is cross-sectional data, we may also give a theoretical uh, uh, and conceptual framework of the study. This is very important. I have done uh, one or two videos on this. A majority of the students leave this. You shouldn't leave this. Always give this uh, theoretical or conceptual framework before econometric or empirical model. Uh, we also need to give our um, uh, empirical model in our study that we are going to estimate. And uh, we also, after uh, giving the uh, model, we describe our variables. And this is very important. Uh, we may define our variables, what are the units of measurement of those variables, and that must be, must be re uh, um, easily understandable for the uh, reader. Finally, we may give limitations of the model if there are any. Then we give results and discussion in fourth chapter. Uh, results mean we interpret the findings of the study and uh, sometime the researcher just uh, interpret or uh, explain the results and they do not uh, include a discussion in their uh, research. So mere interpretation of your result is not enough. You must also include discussion in your results. Majority of the students ignore this part which is not good. Because ignoring discussion implies that 50% of this chapter or this section has been left out. Never do this mistake. Always include relevant and uh, meaningful discussion in your research. So your discussion should be meaningful and there must be a proper balance between results and uh, discussion. Finally, in the last chapter, we give summary conclusions and uh, policy recommendation of the study. and. Uh, there is also a need of uh, keeping a proper link among these. Your summary are based on your results and uh, conclusions are uh, stemming uh, from your uh, summary. And uh, finally, policy recommendation should also be uh, linked to your conclusion and uh, summary. This is very important. Some students just give recommendation in the year from nowhere. Uh, it has not been discussed or it has not been concluded in the study but they give uh, unnecessary or irrelevant uh, recommendations. So your recommendation must be implementable and workable and they must stem from uh, the summary and uh, conclusions of uh, your study. Finally, uh, you also need, uh, need to give references that you have used in your uh, study. And you must include all the references that you have quoted in the text of your uh, thesis or dissertation. Some students uh, do not take care and uh, they leave some of the references and they don't mention in the references at the end of the thesis. That is uh, a mistake that shouldn't be uh, committed. And uh, you must also follow a proper format of referencing both in the text as well as at the end of uh, your uh, thesis. Now I come to the important section of this video and uh, my video basically uh, is focusing on the do nots uh, that you need to avoid. Uh, the first thing is do not ignore any of the do's that I outlined earlier in this video. It means we shouldn't ignore 
the points that I just discussed earlier in the previous stages and this is one of the most important thing that I want to focus on. Never use copy and paste. Don't copy the results or discussion or literature review or methodology of other study and you know you directly paste uh, to your document. Uh, for that purpose many students use uh, Google translation uh, because if you copy and paste then uh, there will be 100% plagiarism of your thesis if you fully copy and uh, if you copy major portion of your thesis then the similarity index may be very higher and the uh, higher education uh, commission of pakistan um, threshold level is 19% uh, it must be below 19% for your thesis or dissertation uh, the similarity index so you shouldn't translate uh, the original english into other language and back to english because your translated uh, text can be easily identified and that could lead to rejection of your thesis in a graduate studies committee or board of studies meeting because in these meetings experts uh, and professors are sitting and they may uh, catch your uh, mistake that you have translated it from other languages and then the write up of your thesis uh, will not be meaningful because uh, you know it must be haphazard and it will not be meaningful so be very much careful uh, in case it is not caught up in the graduate studies record graduate studies committee or the board of studies meeting when your thesis is sent for evaluation to the external examiner the external examiner usually uh, read your uh, thesis critically <clears throat> and uh, he may uh, note that uh, you have copied or you have translated or your uh, uh, um, write-up is not meaningful and it is haphazard so be careful and never do that uh, my today's lecture as i told you focuses on this aspect of do nots copy and paste and plagiarism <clears throat> some people do this because uh, they want to reduce plagiarism here i give uh, an example one of my papers that has been published in uh, an impact factor journal and this is the abstract of uh, that study uh, i copied this from my published paper and i saved uh, in a word file and then i checked its uh, plagiarism since i didn't change any single word in this uh, abstract and then if you look at the plagiarism report here uh, it's completely read and it says 100 percent so the similarity index if you uh, copy and paste 100 percent will be 100 percent similarity index and um, you know that is unacceptable now i want to show what some other students do what they do they usually take this text and they use the google translator to translate it from english to some other language and then from that language to some other language and from other language to other language and finally they copy back to english and then the plagiarism is uh, received so this is the in this slide you see this is the original uh, abstract that i copied and its plagiarism is 100 percent what i did i translated the original text first from english to italian and then from italian to swedish and then from swedish to english and i didn't change any single word in the original so here is the plagiarism report for the translated document and it directly reduced from 100 percent to 73 percent i remember i didn't change a single word in my abstract but still because of translation the whole uh, document uh, language um, has been changed and the plagiarism report the plagiarism report or the similarity index has been reduced from 100% to 73% but usually a student students are uh, translate it from one to other language and uh, they do this they repeat this practice for so many times and finally they reduce the plagiarism to less than 19% but uh, if you read 
their translated document it is completely ununderstandable and the english is totally changed in such a way that uh, it is meaningless and uh, haphazard now i want to compare the two documents that you would see this is the original one which has 100% similarity index and this one is uh, the translated one i just translated two times from english to italian and then from italian to swedish and then back to english but if you compare the two uh, column they are totally different for example here in original there is no mention of alcohol but here in the translated it says this study estimates income elasticities and demand to improve alcohol consumption water quality in peshawar pakistan estimates indicate that it in that it can improve the water is described as a necessity but a normal and resilient service and price now this sentence is meaningless here in the original the original sentence is that the estimates indicate that improved water can be described as a necessity but normal and an ordinary and price elastic service but this translated sentence gives totally different meaning similarly further however confidence intervals show that classification as a necessity is statistically significant uh, the income elasticity is the willingness to pay for drinking water is calculated now this is meaningless the study finds that income and willingness to pay very directly significant that is meaningless the elasticity estimates are generally greater than water uh, greater than zero but less than units this is not units this is unity uh, in original it is unity one but here it says units the study concludes that uh, drinking water improvements are more advantageous to low income groups compared to high income group so what is done when you translate the original text into different languages then they just uh, uh, change the uh, formation of the sentence and they change uh, different words and the original thing is the same but you know it is not meaningless it is not uh, meaningful sorry it is not meaningful it is rather meaningless and uh, this uh, this this thing shouldn't be done you must uh, what what you must do for that the the conclusion is that uh, usually students uh continue this practice to uh, reduce the similarity index to between 15 and 18 percent level so that uh, they fulfill the threshold uh, but this is not good this kind of uh, practice is known as a uh, bootlegging or uh, professional theft or dishonesty this must be avoided researchers must instead rewrite their text in their own words they must uh, understand the idea and write themselves rather than copy and paste so ladies and gentlemen this is one of the most serious blunder that uh, many students commit while they are writing their uh, thesis mp level thesis or uh, phd dissertation and uh, i would like to discourage them from this practice instead um, the mp and phd students are mature enough they might they must read other studies and then they must get the idea from understanding and then they should rewrite uh, in uh, their own words so that uh, will be helpful for them because they will not only understand the idea but uh, they may be able uh, to to avoid the problem of uh, uh, plagiarism so ladies and gentlemen i wish you good luck in your endeavors uh continue your journey of research with honesty uh don't uh, copy and paste always use your own um intelligence and efficiency to write your thesis and uh, dissertation in your own words uh thanks for watching this video if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel kindly do subscribe uh, the channel name is research made easy with himi khan and uh, kindly do not forget to click on the bell icon uh, so that you can get a notification about what other videos are coming uh, in uh, near future and you may share this uh, channel and videos with your friends colleagues and uh, other uh, uh, friends thank you and uh, good